So it's one. I'm, I'm, My name is Mark, and I'm at NWA 3D, and we're going to hear today the four basic steps that we need to 3D print, and then also the four steps of troubleshooting that we would perform on these printers if something went wrong. Um, so a couple initial questions: Have you 3D printed before? Uh, a few times. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Four or five. What were you using before? It helps us give us a little bit of scope. Cubic i3 mega at Innovation Hub. Okay, yeah. We've actually, we went and saw the Innovation Hub at Little Rock not too long ago. It's such a cool place. Um, so, have you done any modeling or CAD design already? A little bit, not in classes. I have, but I haven't had my students do it. Okay, okay, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about first then. So, the very first step, obviously, is to design and make something. And so we're going to need to go through that phase of creating or picking a design or picking, you know, if you're doing a robotics class or otherwise, what we're going to create. So as I know, you guys did buy quite a bit of carbon fiber along with TPU, which is a flexible filament, and then you bought some electric inductive material. It sounds like you guys are going to do kind of some like engineering aspect or you're going to make much more rigid parts. Um, so all of that is Awesome to hear, but it, those materials can be a little finicky at times. So keep that in mind when you're working through them. You may have a little bit more trouble with the Flex TPU compared to just regular PLA. The first step is that design to make. So we're going to create that object, create that design, and I have a few recommendations for you if you don't have a program you like. Um, Tinkercad is one of them. It's just tinker and cad.com. And that's going to be a very simple design interface. You basically drag and drop into it. So it's a good starter, but if you're working towards a high school level, typically you want to ramp up really quick in this area. Um, so it's relatively slow and a little bit easy, just basic shapes. Shape.com is going to be a, a little bit more of a robust program. And both of these programs are on Chromebooks and they don't have any install on your uh, web browser. That makes it a little bit nicer to access for students, especially if they have one-to-one. -one. And it's a great program to kind of move into. So robust, you're going to be creating sketches on a plane and then extruding those sketches. And then my favorite is Fusion 360, also free for educators and students. You just have to sign up on the website. And I'll here at the end of it so that you can maybe start thinking about your design programs and what you're going to do. But we're going to need one thing out of that design program and that is called an STL file. And an STL is a standard triangle language is what that stands for. And basically all it means is that we take an object and we express it in triangles. So you know if we took this spool holder we would split this entire area up into triangles and then that would be the expression on the computer. And that isn't what the printer's going to understand. So we're going to have to move it from that design STL phase into something else called a 3D printer or a 3D slicer software. And so that's the one that we have to install today called Cura. And basically it's gonna take all those triangles and it's gonna cut them down in an X, Y axis all the way along its Z axis. And then the printer understands those coordinates that it provides us. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and move over to the computer. I'm sure you found the micro SD card. It also has that installation file that we're doing now. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then we'll go over through that. Okay. All right. Go ahead and plug in your USB with the micro SD card in the back and click on Cura. And then install whichever full, whichever application applies to you, whether it be a Mac or a Windows. Go ahead and go through the basic install process, and then it'll pop you to a screen that says add new machine or select your machine and let me know when you reach that. I've already downloaded Cura. Okay, what version? Uh, it's loading up here, just say. Sure, no problem.
Well, I thought I had to see. I don't see the icon. I'm going to click on your on your thumb drive to download it. It should just yeah, it should just install from the from the thumb drive there. It's going. I've got a. It's not titled Creo, is it? I think that's using 360. So it's loading. Give it just a few seconds. All right. So it's loaded, it, it, it's uh, coming up right now. Okay. And let's see, let me do the quick setup real quick. Uh, select our machine. Yep, so you should be at pretty much the exact same scene here. Is that true? Great. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the other option down at the bottom. <clears throat> Go ahead and click next. Okay. Then we're going to choose the Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L. It's about halfway down. And then click next one more time and then finish. All right. All right. So now it's going to pull us into a new window space. And this is our environment where we're going to change the settings for our printer. And also how the model would end up looking when we printed it. So for this case, we're going to have to change the machine a little bit. We need to make this build space a bit larger to match our printer. So go ahead and click here in the top left-hand corner. Click on machine. And go down to machine setting. Okay. Now this dialog box is going to give us the dimensions of that blue box we see in the middle. So we're going to change the width depth. So first, we're going to change it to 300 on width. It can also be considered your x-axis. We're also going to change it to 300 on your depth, which is your y-axis. And finally, we would do 400 on your height, which is going to be your z-axis, and it's going to be 12 by 12 by 16. Is the 300 for millimeters? Yep. Okay. Okay, I've got 300, 300, 400. We're good to go. Awesome. And then make sure heated bed is enabled. It should already be checked. Just to make sure. And then we can go ahead and change the machine name if you have a different printer, if you prefer. You can also type in the A31 is the type of model you have. Click OK. And OK. OK, now I have three, I have three printers. Do I need to distinguish if it's uh, printer Alpha, Bravo, or Charlie? No, you do not have to. Um, they will all run off the same information, and as long as you have those settings that we did correctly for the first one, it'll work on the next two. Okay, thank you. Yep, they are the exact same printer, so it should be perfectly fine. Actually, excuse me, we may want to make two different printers. That's because one of your printers has a nozzle upgrade, and so that's going to change a couple things for you. So the nozzle upgrade is what you're going to use all of that carbon fiber and conduct TPU filament on. And it's going to that's be the 1.75. I'm sorry? Is that the 1.75 nozzle? So that's the 0. 0.6 nozzle. Oh, 0. 0.6, okay. Yeah, the 0. 0.6 nozzle is the upgraded version. So if you're looking at your, if you were to look at your printers, the one with the yellow here to feed the filament in is the one with the bigger nozzle. So the other two are okay, black. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll go ahead and click on machine settings. And I'm going to give this a new name. I'm just going to say 831 0 0.6 nozzle, like so. Click OK and OK one more time. And that means down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we're going to go ahead and change that nozzle size to 6 to save it for it. Now, you'll notice when we do change that value, the shell thickness up at the top kind of goes yellow. 
Now that's because it doesn't understand what we're trying to do. It's saying that it can't put down a total of one millimeter of plastic because each time the passes, it'll put down 0.6. So in other words, it would only be able to put down 1.2 or 0.6 each time. So if we change that value to 1.2, it should be happy. So we'll cover that here in just a little bit. I'll show you more whenever we're looking at the model itself. Okay. So for the other printers, if we wanna make a machine for that one too real quick, go ahead and click add new machine. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to other, with next and then go to Mendel. With next one more time and finish. It's gonna pull us into the same space. And now we can again adjust our machine settings by clicking on the top left. And so now you should see that you already have another printer available and you can swap between them rather easily. So let's go ahead and click machine settings and we're going to do the exact same thing we did last time 300, 300, 400. And then we'll name this one A31. 0.4 nozzle. Now the nozzles do make a large difference. If you slice the nozzle for a 0.4 nozzle, you do put it on the 0.6, it might come out a little bit weird, or it might try to put down more plastic than it actually can, and it might kind of make your model a little wonky. So, okay. and then we can go ahead and click OK. And this time we're going to change the nozzle here for this one to 0 0.4. All right. Now it did the same thing up at the top. It says shell thickness. We can never achieve one millimeter by putting down 0.4. So, you know, if I put down 0.4 for each wall, it's going to be a 0 0.8. So go ahead and change that to 0 0.8. And those are the only values that are going to vary between the two printers. So the shell thickness and nozzle size for both. Okay. So let's go over these, these print settings we've kind of been adjusting here on the left hand side real quick. And I'll talk a little bit about each and I hope I can explain them so you understand them. And if you don't, please let me know, ask any questions you would like. Okay. Okay, so first off, here we have a layer height. Now, this is going to be the value that is most important to determine how nice your print will come out. So a 0 0.1 millimeter, which is your highest resolution, is going to be very fine and smooth for most objects. It's also going to take a very long time. It basically means that every 0 0.1 one millimeter in Z axis, it's going to lay down another layer of plastic. So the closer you have the plastic, the nicer it's going to look. So 0 0.1 is about the highest you can, or the nicest quality you can go, while 0 0.3 is the lowest quality. Now time is going to vary from 0 0.3 to 0 0.1 pretty drastically. So keep that in mind if you're trying to prototype something, probably go with a 0 0.3, 0 0.2. You want to finalize it, move it to that 0 0.1 layer height. So I'm going to put at 0.2, a good mid range for us. And then the shell thickness is going to be the perpendicular walls to the build space, the big blue build space we have. Now, what I mean by that is anything that is standing up from the build space is going to be printed in a vertical wall, which the gantry or the is only going to spit down one line to start creating that wall unless otherwise specified. So right now we have it putting down two walls because it lays down 0 0.4 each time from our nozzle and each pass is going to put that down. So if I wanted three walls thick or to have a more durable outside wall, I would change this one to 1.2. 1 so the 0.4 is always going to be a multiple of four, and the 0.6 is always going to be a multiple of six. That's pretty much the only rule of thumb that you'll need to remember about increasing wall thickness. I'm gonna change that back to 0 0.8 real quick. Enable retraction is simply to make your prints look a little bit nicer. It basically just pulls plastic 
back a little bit when moving from spot to spot so it doesn't drool or string everywhere. Next, we're gonna have bottom and top thickness. I'm going to change this value to 0 0.8 also. Now, this is simply because I like the walls to be all the same thickness around. It does not have to be a multiple of four. Okay. Okay. So next, the fill density is going to be how durable do your prints want to be? So basically, it's going to create a lattice structure on the inside of those walls that we've been talking about, the bottom, top, and shells. And it's going to support all of them just by holding them together. So we'll take a look at that here in a second. We can leave it at 20 for now. Next, we're going to have our print speed. And the print speed is fastest at 50 millimeters per second. Yes, you can move up the print speed, but you will start to see defects as it's moving just a bit too quick. Some layers won't stick together. and You could have various print defects. So 50 is the typical speed that we want to go at. You can make that slower, like 35 millimeters per second. It's going to increase the quality of your prints and may help with overhangs or other places that aren't quite touching the build area. Next, we're gonna have printing temperature and we're gonna change this to 220 degrees. And that's our typical value for any sort of PLA. So the carbon fiber you have will also print at 220 well. The conductive should print well at 220 and then the TPU can be a little finicky and you may have to adjust this value to 210 or somewhere in there. And that, that's almost- What about the- Go ahead. Uh, what about the, the wood filament? We have not, I don't have that yet, but I do plan on ordering sure. it, so. So the wood filament does print well at 220. Now, a weird thing about the wood filament is the hotter it is, the darker the print comes out looking. So you can actually vary the temperature to get a darker colored stain print rather than a light colored print. So the, okay. it's a bit Good different. So you can actually vary between like 200 to 220 to 230 and you're gonna have mm -hmm. a color print each time. Okay, that's good to know, thank you. Yep, usually the 200 degrees Celsius and up is going to be fine for PLA. It's something that you can manipulate to find what you like the most. We just prefer 220. Excellent, so what we're gonna do next is the bed temperature. Now this value can go up to a maximum of 75 degrees Celsius. There is a limiter on the software itself for the printer that it won't allow you to go above that. So if you ever encounter that, if you're trying to crank the bed temperature to 100 or something, it's gonna throw you an error. So we're gonna change this to 50 degrees Celsius. This is a good temperature for the plastic to lay down and also to cool slowly, allowing it to keep its form and shape. Okay, can I ask you a quick question? Will Absolutely. that limit us to will that limit us to the, any type of filament that we cannot use? So the only type of filament that I have found I can't use on these printers is ABS. Now that's not really okay. the downside as PLA has increased in all of its strengths since it's been released for desktop printing. Now you can still achieve things like hips, like high impact polystyrene. You can achieve things from, um, what is it? PETG is a great material, it's much more structured. Um, the carbon fiber should lay down fine and pretty much all composites are going to work well. Um, so I guess kind of your question was more of, it, that bed temperature might not be hot enough to keep some prints from warping. And that is true for ABS, but most other prints will sit successfully on it. Okay, good deal, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so what we have next is a support type. And basically all that's going to do for us is generate support or structure scaffolding, essentially, underneath any overhangs. So anything that's above the build plate, but isn't structured by something else will need a scaffolding. And so that's what the supports are going to create. So let's go ahead and change that to everywhere for now. And I'll show you that here in a second when we load in the model. Okay, and all that will be waste product at the end, correct? That will not be part of the build? Correct, you will simply just peel it off and throw it away. You can also okay. save your PLA. One thing we like to do, the PLA is biodegradable. 
Um, so we have a, boxes full of like PLA and leftover materials or failed prints. And sooner or later, we plan on trying to, you know, reuse that. The only thing about reusing this plastic is the more you reuse it, the more it degrades and it causes problems with your prints. So we're looking into a way to kind of recycle it. PLA is biodegradable and made from cornstarch, so I'm sure there's a good way. If you have thought of anything, that'd be pretty awesome. The carbon fiber, on the other hand, I'm not positive. It's technically PLA with carbon fiber strands inside of it to make it more rigid. I don't know if there's a process you could utilize for those. All right, so next, the platform adhesion type. This is essentially exactly as it sounds. It's going to help your prints stick to the build plate. For now, let's leave it on none, and I'll show you, I'll change the value myself and kind of show you what that is achieving for us. Next, we're gonna change the diameter of our filament. We just want it to match what's on our spool. So go ahead and change this to 1.75. All of these spools you should have received should be 1.75 in diameter, and that can be seen on the sticker on the side. So right here. Okay. Yep. And it's also going to tell you the color and the material. All right. So that's all of the settings for this one. If you would like, we can go over the next one real quick and basically just run through the settings and change them to how we want them to be. Would you like to do that? That's right, yeah, we'll run through it real quick. Yep, no problem. So click on machine and then select your other 0.6 nozzle. So the shell thickness should be 1.2. That's gonna be two shells or two walls. I'm gonna go ahead and change the bottom and top to match it. We can leave the fill density at 20. Print speed, printing temperature needs to go to 220. Bed temperature to 50. Support type to everywhere. And then finally diameter 1.75. And that should be good for that one, and those settings will save and on your computer and should be there always every time you log on now. So one thing about this program is it does create user-specific profiles. So if a kid were to log on to your, um, a student were to log on to your computer, it's not going to be the same printers available. So you would have to be logged in for them to see these. Okay. Just something to keep in mind whenever you're installing and trying to have students use this program, you will have to go through those settings with them again. Each computer I use, that they use to, I would do this on each computer the students are going to use, right? Right. If you want to, if you want to use okay. this on each computer, you could only have maybe one or, well, maybe three, since you have three printers. Three computers dedicated to slicing is what we would consider it to be. And basically they just bring their file from that design, that STL file, plug it into the computer and slice it. And that would make it probably a lot easier. Um, okay, got it. It would be a little bit more simple. They don't have to, you know, manipulate this program all the time, but they can change it on those three. Okay. All right. So we should be good on the 0 0.6 nozzle. So we'll stick with this one for now. So let's go ahead and load a model in because we have all our settings correct and we're good to go on that part. So I'm going to click on load here in the top left hand corner. Now you can also click on file and load model file if you desire, but I'm just going to click here on this little square. We can navigate into our SD card or thumb drive. We have included STLs to start us off. If we double click on the STL files, we should have a six sided dice, a keychain, and a spool holder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose the six-sided double-click it. That's going to put it into the build space. Now, this looks pretty small for our huge printer that we have here, but that's all right. We'll find a bigger model here at a later date. Let me, let me interrupt you real quick. I've got the die. Uh, I've also got a little robot guy. Absolutely. Do you want to keep the robot or do you want to keep the die? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll do the die. Okay, so right-click the robot and just click delete. Okay. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Easy. So on that uh, right hand or the right-click menu, you have center on platform. So if I had moved my die all the way here to the top or front left, which is its origin point, you can tell by the little black axis here. If I right-click it and choose center on platform, it's going to put it right back in the middle. 
I like that function a lot. I can delete it, I can multiply it, or I can reload and delete all objects in the same menu. So it, the camera controls for this is going to be a little bit different, it's similar to CAD programs, but not quite there. If you right click, it's going to allow you to rotate the entire area. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. <clears throat> and finally, if you hold down the shift key and then right click, it will pan. So that's gonna allow you to move it back and forth. And this, this blue checkered area is the entire uh, printing bed for, uh, for our printers, right? That's the 12 by 12 area. Right, so this whole build space, this whole blue box that we see in here is the build space of our printer. Okay. Yep. So anywhere on here, you should be able to set a model and it should be able to print. Now, if the model goes gray like this one did here, that means it's just too far to the left-hand side and it can't print it. So when it's yellow, it should... Okay fine and it'll actually allow you to print it. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that guy back to the middle. Now what we can do is we can left click on this box. It's gonna zoom us into it. And we have three buttons that pop up in the bottom left hand corner. Now the first one is going to be rotate. So if I click on rotate, it's going to pull up a couple of circles around the object. Now we can grab either one of these and then spin it, click and drag and it'll allow us to rotate the object how we please. And so this is good for deciding print orientation. So some objects may be better laying on their backs or on their sides. And that is something you'll become more familiar with as you 3D print. Now remember, whenever the 3D printer makes an object, it makes it in an XY plane and then the Z. So it's gonna print whatever's on this bottom layer first, move up a little bit and do it all over. So if you want to reset the option, we can click lay flat, helps to try and find a flat side, and reset just resets it to how it loaded in. Next we have scale, and that's going to allow us to do exactly such. We can scale it up by percentages here on the scale X, Y, Z, or by millimeters. So if you wanted a 20 millimeter cube exactly, we can do that also. We can just type in 20 here, and it's going to allow us to manipulate in a uniform direction or a non-uniform if unchecked. <clears throat> so this is great for scaling student prints. A lot of the time students do create very large models or structures when they didn't really mean to. That may just be dimensional or otherwise. And you can always scale those down to fit the printer or fit the build space. Okay. Next okay. we have and that fit simply flips it 180 degrees over an axis. It is actually going to mirror it. So if I were to click this mirror X, the two will become backwards. So keep that in mind when you're using mirror, it's a little bit weird. So if I were to print this off now, all of my numbers would actually be facing backwards. So I'm gonna flip it one more time, there we go. Okay. Okay. So the last thing I really wanna show you is going to be our layer view. Now this is the view that the printer takes and sees and is going to actually look at. So if I click on view mode in the top right hand corner and then click layers, this is my preferred view. I almost never look at it in normal view unless moving it around. And layer view is going to give us those details of a slicer. So it pops up a small bar here on the side and this allows us to drag through the object. So what we're seeing here is that there is 100 layers to my cube. And this is the very first one that will stick down. So everything looks pretty good. If there is a first layer, that's a very good thing. If there's not a first layer, you may have problems with your model. So keep that in mind whenever you're, before you send it to the printer, I always like to check the very first layer. So I'm gonna show you a couple things here about the settings that we can change. So this yellow structure here on the inside is our fill density. So if I change this to 30%, Go watch the inside of it generate much more structure. The outside walls, this red is considered the outside shell. The green is considered the inside shell. So if I change this value up one, we should see that green wall grow. 1.8, apologies. Now you should see there's two green walls because we went up by another 0.6. If we go down to 0 0.6, the same size as the nozzle, there will be only a red wall. Okay. 
And then I'm going right. to back to two walls there. Now, another thing I wanted to show you, I'm going to move this around and try and make it a little bit weird. See if I can get supports to enable. So I'm going to go back to layers. There we are. So if you notice, I rotated it in an odd direction. And now it's going to generate that blue stuff down at the bottom. Now that is the support used to make sure the object still prints. So that's why we put it on everywhere, just in case you load a model in that doesn't have an area supported, we wanna make sure that it is. So if I scroll all the way down to it, you'll notice that it has a very thin structure and it has just a couple lines. That's basically just going to provide enough surface area to hold up the cube. Okay. And that's automatically generated on any model. Now platform adhesion, if I change this to brim real quick, notice the blue at the base will expand and it basically creates a suction cup effect here, keeping our model stuck to the build area. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave my like that and I'm going to save it. If you notice here in the top left-hand corner, we do have a time frame it gives us. This is usually off by a couple minutes, but it's pretty good. And then it also gives you the material and length and weight. So let's go ahead and either click toolpath to SD here or click file save G code. So I like file save G code because I'm picky where it goes. Then I'm going to on the SD card or USB, go ahead and just save it inside. All right. Save the uh, NWA. SD card. Save. Yep. That'd be a perfect spot for it. Now, which okay. one you have set up right now? I guess I should show you what we're looking for, huh? So we can go ahead and close Cura once you save it, and and then you can unplug your SD card. We can go ahead and close that real quick. All right. And then here on our printer, the one that this trigger here in the back is going to determine if you're using a 0.4 or a 0.6 nozzle. If you have a yellow one, it's the 0.6. If this is all black, it's a 0.4. So which one do you have set up in front of you? Uh, well, I saved it on the uh, point, uh, four, the first one. Okay, yeah, sure. So we have the 0.4 millimeter for the cube. So that one's gonna be the one that is not, not yellow? Right, if it is black, it is a 0.4. So not okay. 0.4, yellow is 0.6. We just wanna try and give you that distinction between the two. I'm going to check that STL file real quick just to make sure. Yep, sure. So first we input an STL into Kira, and then we export a G-code. G-code is actually the exact same thing that a CNC machine uses to run itself. It's basically just a huge string of coordinates that tell the print head how to move, when to heat up, and when to stop. So if anything's wrong with the G-code and your printer stops randomly, that's probably what it is. It just is missing coordinates to go to next. Okay, we should be good. I'm on the right, uh, on the. Not the yellow one, but the other one, so. Okay, sounds good. So the point four. So what we're gonna right. do now is we're going to actually do the third step. So slicing is the second. We have to move it from that STL file to a G code. So we're translating it for the printer, really. Now we're gonna transfer it to the printer. So if we take that small SD card out of the back of our USB dongle, and then we're going to insert that into the printer, and that's just going to be here on the inside 
we should have a small slot that says SD. And we're going to put the golden tabs up and just slide it inside. Good, click into place just like an SD card port, and then we're good. So that's just going to be all of step three. So once students slice a file and they have it prepped, all they have to do is go over and plug in the SD card to the printer, and then they can select the file on the machine itself. So of course, the fourth and final step would be to click print on the printer. Now, the only problem with that is that we need to make sure everything's set up on our printers right now. And we're just gonna go so over some basic details and troubleshoot. So in theory, we could print right now, but it might not stick because we haven't leveled the build plate or we don't know if all the motors are plugged in or otherwise, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is let's go ahead and talk about the four troubleshooting steps. So we finished the steps to print. We've achieved that just by moving it to the slicer, then the printer, and then print. And now we're gonna do troubleshooting tasks. So if something goes wrong, what do we do? The first thing, of course, is going to be Cura. So we wanna check inside of our program to make sure everything is okay. And we've already gone through that. We know that we've chose the right file and definitely the right nozzle size. That may be something that you wanna make a hard distinction to on your students. Um, and then they should be pretty fine about it. So we have Cura set up and ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a mechanical inspection. We're just more of going to look at the overview of the printer. I'm gonna point out a couple of things, tell you what they are and make sure everything's plugged in, okay? So here we have the extruder assembly. So this area that has the fan on it and has the blue tube and wire running out of it, this is considered to be the hot end where the nozzle resides. Now this trigger back here is also included in the extruder assembly. It is where the plastic is pushed from. So if I move it over here, you notice that we have a geared tooth and it's going to push filament through just like this and then it's going to ride through the entire tube. So this is the idler pulley, a practical pressure, and then this is going to feed it through. So that's all part of the extruder. Now we're gonna have the build plate, which is this big blue build surface. Underneath the build plate, we do have adjustment knobs. And so those are going to be located right here. There's one in each corner and they're going to have springs directly above them. So we have our x-axis bar here that goes across it. We have our y-axis here. And then finally our z is going to be going up and down. So we can check out the motors. I'm pretty sure you have everything plugged in and it's ready to go, I'm sure it is. So I'm just gonna point out the limit switches real quick. And one here. And then finally one in the back. Now the limit switches are critical. If it seems like it's kind of clipping or making noises or it's almost grinding when you first select the printer, it's most likely because the limit switch is not being activated, which basically the motor doesn't know when to stop. So it's going to keep going until otherwise noted. All right, All right. confident that you have everything plugged in. So we, you went through the manual, I'm sure you achieved it well. So that is the basic mechanical inspection. We also have loose belts. These belts that the carriage rides on as well as the bed could come loose, but that would be quite a lot of wear. We've had printers that are out there for two years or more and they still have their belts that are running. So what we're gonna do now is the third troubleshooting step. So after you check mechanically, make sure everything's plugged in and working, you're going to need to level the build plate. So Leveling the build plate doesn't have to happen every time, especially if these are typically stationary. It should only need to happen if someone messes with it or if it's moved from place to place. The so same as it has just gone through shipping, you will need to level each build plate. So let's go ahead and go over that process. So first I'm gonna turn on my printer real quick. It'll show us a couple of things about this initial status screen that I'm gonna go over real quick. First, we have this emblem here in the middle is going to be our nozzle emblem, essentially telling us how hot the printer currently is. So the top value is zero, which means it wants to cool to zero. 
Now, room temperature is 17 degrees Celsius, so that's what it's sitting at. Same thing for the bed right next to it. That is a small line with kind of, you know, heat waves coming off of it. That is our heat bed. It displays the exact same data. Next, we have our fan, and it's just the percentage of what it, which it spins. Next, we have D, which is going to tell you where the printer is moving next whenever operating. And then this kind of box here down at the bottom is a time frame and file selection. Let's go ahead and do the initial bed build plate leveling. So click on the button once, go down to setup, and then click auto home. So our printer should automatically move and it's gonna to come to this front corner. Just like in Cura, we had kind of that three marking, the black mark this here. So that is the same origin point on the printer. It goes, it goes all the way left, hits a limit switch, all the way back, hits a limit switch, and all the way down and hits a limit switch. So did you just achieve that just fine? Yeah, give me just a second to get this. Oh yeah, sure. You keep the safety or those uh, those pins on it. Yeah, so these these little pins that we have on here are actually to keep the build plate on. So the build plate itself okay. can entirely come off. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. So first, before I can move my stuff because it's locked into place, I need to disable motors. So go back to setup, and then disable motors is right below auto home. Now the only thing we don't want to move when leveling the build plate is going to be the Z axis. So as long as we leave that alone, we should be fine. So I'll pull off the build plate and show you. So if I unclip each one, I can remove this, the entire build area. It's actually on a flex plate that allows you to bend it and kind of peel prints off. So that can be useful when trying to remove items. Be careful not to bend too much because it can kind of warp your build space. Underneath it, you okay. have a sheet of glass. This sheet of glass is to serve as an, kind of a transmitter of the heat from the build plate as to not burn this. So those just layer on top of each other, glass, and then the build plate, and then clip into place with four clips. So the only kind of thing to note about the four clips is this front corner here, we want to move this one over quite a bit so that the nozzle doesn't collide with it when coming to its origin point. So I'm going to go ahead and clip mine back on. All right. So now we can go through the process of leveling. So we have it at zero Z and then we can have it anywhere on the X, but the first place we're going to put it is right here above the first adjustment knob. So we're going to line up this extruder head directly above it, creating a gap between the nozzle and that knob. So we want to line those up just like so. You'll notice here I have my nozzle, and right below it is the spring and adjustment to change the height. So we're going to need a piece of paper. What did I do with mine? We're just going to need any sort of piece of paper will work. Anything that you have close by. It shouldn't get messed up or anything, so it should be fine. We're going to need that, and we're just going to fold it in half, hamburger style. Now right. we have our nozzle and our knob lined up. We're going to put this in between the two. And what we're looking for when doing that is a small resistance on this paper to inform us that we have about a 200 micron gap. So that's basically the distance. Right now, I don't have, uh, I don't have any gap, so. Okay. So, so if you don't have any gap and you can't really fit it underneath, you can actually push down on this build space because it is riding on springs and it should allow you to slide it in between. So if you have right. gap, we're going to adjust that knob counterclockwise. 
So if I were to think of it from a mechanical standpoint and I was twisting a nut or knob, I would be turning it to the right and tightening it to lower the build plate. So mine is a little bit far away. If yours is too close, go ahead and turn it counterclockwise. And I'm going to do the opposite. And if it's too close, you said turn it which direction? Counterclockwise. So a little saying, clock up, count down. So also if you were to think of it as if you were turning a screw otherwise, that would actually be turning it to the right. Okay, the sheet, the sheet moves now without me having to push down, so we're good. Okay, does it feel like there's a resistance to the piece of paper? Almost uh, not any dragging? The nozzle, maybe, but just from the uh, base. Okay, so move it up just a little bit more. Now that we have a good gap, we want to feel it kind of drag the piece of paper. So you should feel it almost vibrate or it will make noise while it scratches between the nozzle and the build plate. And so we just want to find that, that sweet spot. And this can be a little bit hard at times, but it should be all right. Just once you feel a bit of resistance, you can leave it at that point. And so mine has a bit of drag on it, and then you can move on to the next three. So do you feel comfortable with that? Would you like me to explain it in any other way? No, I'm just, I'm just leveling it right now. I'm getting pretty okay. close. Okay. Nope. Sounds good. I'm going to do the same then. So I feel good on that one. Come over to this corner. That one's too far away. Twist it clockwise. There we go. Okay. So we do that with all four corners? Yep. You can do it all four corners. We're good on that one. All right. Once I do all four corners, I kind of like to check the middle section as well. All right. Paper moves just about everywhere. I'm going to be happy with that. All right. All right, I've got two of the four done. Just bear with me. Oh, no, you're good. Take all the time you need. All right, I got three of the four. There we go. A little bit more level. Okay, four or four. We're good. All right, awesome. 
So one thing that we want to do just prior to saying we're finished leveling is we want to preheat the nozzle and check it again because there's the possibility that there is plastic still on that nozzle from the test print that we did. So in order to do that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on the button. This is the same way you would load filament. So click here, go to setup, and then select preheat PLA. So that's going to okay. do two things. It's going to heat up the nozzle and heat up the build plate. So one thing about heating up the nozzle while it's sitting so close is we'll probably want to move it up just slightly. So I like to move it up manually. That's just my preferred method. You can grab this X axis just slightly and spin the spiral in the back, allowing it to move up. Now it could get grease on your hands. So if you're not big on that, you can also do it on the machine. Now that can be achieved by going to controls, move axis down at the bottom. You can move one millimeter and then move your Z axis and it'll allow it to go up and down. So that's an option as well. So now we're heating up our nozzle and I moved it up so that as it heats up, we don't create a pot mark here on this build plate because this can kind of, you know, uh, if it's sitting there too hot for too long, it's, it's going to actually warp this area and kind of push everything away. So we just want to make sure we move that up. It won't do that while printing because it's consistently moving, but if it's just sitting there, it can. So to keep it intact a little bit more, we want to do that. Our nozzle should be heated up enough now that we can go ahead and auto home and start our leveling and we're just going to check it real quick. It's going to be a super quick process and we'll see if there's any difference. So we're going to do the setup and then auto. Home. Set up and auto home. Set up and auto home. Yep. Just the same way we would level the object. You would do set up and auto home. Once it reaches origin point, we need to disable motors. All right, mine hit it, so I'm going to disable my motors. Move my the nozzle didn't. I guess it's not moving along the X axis. I'm sorry? It's kind of vibrating, making that noise. So it kind of made a funny noise and kind of was like ticking at you? Yeah. So did it try and go all the way to the left and go tick, 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 tick? No, it's still right in the middle after the middle. It hadn't moved. It won't move left or right. Okay. So try the auto home one more time and see if it achieves it this time. Sometimes it it's, it's a little finicky. I just want to test it. Otherwise, it's some something mechanical that we might have to check out. Oh yeah, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's, it's not moving anywhere. So it sounds like your motor may be partially unplugged. So if you want to check that x-axis motor, which is, I'm going to turn this a little bit, that's going to be right back here. You want to check that motor, make sure it's all the way plugged in. Sometimes that can cause issues to where the motor gets power but can't fully turn all right i pushed up on it just to see if it had... kind of snug fit yeah want me to do the uh auto home again yep go ahead and try it same deal okay yeah, that worked. Uh... Yeah, that worked. Man, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just deal with that it so often. All right, sweet. So now mine's heated up right now, and I'm going to check the level my... that we did before. So mine is actually in the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner. So this one? Correct. Right. That is its origin point. That's perfect. Good deal. We're good then. 
Okay, so now that we have it heated up, we're gonna put that paper in between, check each of the four spots real quick, and then we're absolutely done with Lumley. So as long as we still feel it, the paper kind of drags. Mine feels pretty good there, move it over. Same thing. Now the reason we heated these up is the build plate does change shape as it heats. So there's the possibility that it's gonna be a little bit different than before. Not only that, but also the plastic on the nozzle will melt and then we might have a greater gap than we did before. But it looks like all around mine is pretty level. So now that I'm checked it, I'm gonna move it up just because it's hot. Okay, there's not as much friction on mine now. Okay, so we probably knocked off some plastic is what we did. So if you wanna make it a little bit more friction to where you're comfortable, you could go ahead and do that right now. Hey, I just wanna check, how much time do you have left in your planning period? Oh, just a few minutes. Okay, okay, we're just about done, so I wanted to make sure that we can finish everything. We should be, we should be just fine. Yeah, you, you, uh, they'll come in quietly and, and listen. All right, sounds good. No problems there. We get it. We'll get it done. I'm just. I'm calibrating. The, I've got two more. Okay. So if the build plate wasn't level, I'm gonna give you the aspect of what would we see. Essentially, if it was too low, we would see spaghetti and plastic stringing. If it was too close, we wouldn't see any plastic at all because it can't extrude past the build, past the build plate. So it would basically be causing back pressure. So those are the two okay. that we can have. So that's what we'll look for when we start the print. Perfect, so we only have one last troubleshooting step to really talk about, and that's the filament. So all we need to do is really put the filament inside of the printer. Now there's a couple of things that we can talk about. There's something called preheat PLA, which we have selected, so that's gonna heat our belt and our nozzle. And then we also have something that's in that same menu. So if we click setup, click once, go to setup, and then down at the bottom, you'll notice it's called preheat soft pool. This preheat soft pool is going to only heat up to 100 degrees Celsius. Now we use this to remove any material after a print or to try and pull out any clogs that could happen from plastic getting stuck. So that is something that you may have to do. I love using a soft pull. I use the soft pull on this as a matter of fact and I'll show you kind of what it ends up looking like usually. So you see how it's kind of stringy compared to the other? Okay, yeah. The soft pull is going to pull out most of that material and help us remove anything out of this area. So that's a good way to remove clogs and filament. Now we also have a nozzle cleaner in your toolkit. It should be a small needle that we can floss with. That's considered you just heat it up to 220 and then floss the nozzle to try and poke anything out. You shouldn't have to do that. Usually a soft pull takes care of everything. So let's go ahead and feed our filament. So I have mine heated up at 220, so that's where we want it to be. So if yours isn't there, go ahead and click preheat PLA one more time. So set up preheat PLA. And now I'm going All to right. clip off this little extra stuff because this will happen pretty often. So I'm going to go ahead and clip it and I'm going to clip it at an angle to help me feed it through. Just like so. So you do have a pair of flush shears also in the toolkit that came with it. So now that I have it clipped and ready, I'm going to put it back onto my spool. You can have it feed under or above.
whichever one you prefer. If you're printing a tall item, I like having it go above. If I'm printing a short item like this cube, I'm gonna have it coming under. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna unspool it from the side, place it on my spool holder, and feed it underneath. I'm gonna move it closer here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to feed it into our feeder gear and idler pulley right here. So there is a small hole right on this side of the axis. We can basically just push it inside. So if you'll notice, it slots through the hole right there. Squeeze the trigger and push it the rest of the way through the tube. So we should be able to push it all through. It might take quite a Feel it hit that resistance, it's going to hit the nozzle and it's not going to give too much, but it'll still allow you to push it if you apply enough pressure. So go ahead and push it quite a little bit more to make sure the nozzle is clear and it should be spitting out plastic now. All right, I'm feeding it through the gas leak. So if you notice, I kind of do I, do I push it all the way into the nozzle? Yep, push it all the way to the nozzle until it does something like this. Kind of creates a string. And we can just remove that. Did you raise, did you raise your nozzle up? Yep, raise it up a little bit. That's going to help you push it out. So if your nozzle is hot, try not to leave it next to the bill plate. It will cause it to have a little pop marks or issues inside of it. Okay, yeah, I see it now. Perfect. So just push the filament through until you see your color that you want to see. And that's it. That's a good way to push filament through, clear out old colors, or push out clogs even. So we have one last and final step, and that's to click print. So all we have to do now is click on the button, go down to print from SD card. and choose the file. So six-sided dice. The first thing it does is heats up. Second thing it does is going to move to origin point. Third is going to start printing. So it's gonna come here, it's gonna kind of prime itself and touch down and then it'll move to the middle and start printing. So I have a little bit of plastic drilling out so I'm just gonna grab it with a tool. And it should be fine even if you don't. Homing or origin point now. Start printing. How's yours doing? It's moving to the origin point and so what we're gonna look for, we always want to watch the first layer. I think this is a crucial step to 3D printing. Watch and see if the plastic actually lays down. And if it does, we're in a good position. If it doesn't, we need to adjust our build plate. So it looks like mine is laying down and I am getting plastic stuck to this blue surface. If I didn't, it's probably too close. If it's not sticking, it's too far away. And you can adjust it with the moves. You can hot level it, it. So if it's not sticking, you can move that to the left or clockwise and it's going to bring it up. I look good right now. That's awesome. But it is okay to do it hot, you said. Yes, absolutely. It's okay to level it while it's printing. So that's one thing I prefer. Uh, my leveling process, what I usually do is I just start the print. I get it close, I'll eyeball it. I'll start the print, and then if I don't see it sticking, I'm going to adjust it right there, then restart, and it should be all fine. All right, it looks good. It's not getting smashed down, and it is sticking. So it looks like... Uh, you did a good job there. Excellent. It looks like you did a good job. Yeah. You have been an excellent student today, Mr. Gilman. I will send you a follow-up email with the remainder of this video. And if you don't have any other questions and you're already printing with that printer, just make sure you go over all of the kind of, you know, initial setup. Make sure you're checking the motors and stuff kind of like earlier. Um, mechanical inspection and such. And you should be good to go.
Excellent. Yeah, I've got students just walked in. So we're going to run through this, and uh, I'm going to do the calibration first, and then when I get your email, we'll start Monday on that. We might uh, we might print some dice today. All right. Sounds awesome. Well, I appreciate your All right. I have Good luck 3D printing. Yeah, if I have any questions, I'll email you. Absolutely. That's perfect. If you need anything for tech support or you do have very serious questions towards the printer itself, we have a support page. You just fill out the document and it's going to give you, it, and basically it's going to send you the service team. We'll respond within 24 hours on the service. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I appreciate okay. it. No problem. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Uh, you too. Bye.